Yes. Now we will discuss about the middle layer part 3. In this part, we will discuss about the extension, posterior extension of the middle layer. Here, this cavity is middle layer. This is posteriorly, this cavity is middle layer. Here, this, this part is middle layer. It's posterior extension, it's posterior extension. That is known as muscular enter. Here you can see this is ear pinna. Here, here in ear pinna, there is the pressure known as simba conchi. And here at this level, there is a triangle in the outer surface of the bone. This is supraviated triangle. Here lies supraviated triangle. We also like mag even triangle, mag even triangle. Here lies supra meter triangle or mag even triangle. So this is ear pinna, this is external castrometer, this is middle ear. If you cut a section, parastyle section, and both part, medial and lateral part, reflect like this. This is lateral part, this is medial part. So here lies medial part. Here you can see this is anterior wall of the middle ear, this is posterior wall of the middle ear. This is the roof and this is the floor of the middle ear. This middle ear communicates through this small opening. This opening projecting uh, upper part of the middle ear that is known as EP tympan. This part is known as EP tympan. It lies in this part, this opening is present. This opening is known as editus to enter. This is editus to enter. Or editus and enter. This opening, here lies this opening. Through this opening, this middle ear cavity communicates with the muscular enter. So, this cavity is muscular enter. The capacity of this cavity is about 1 ml. 1 ml. And dimension of each wall is about 10 ml. So it has roof, it has floor, it has anterior wall, posterior wall, it has medial wall and lateral wall. So approximately all walls, all wall size is about 10 ml. At birth, it is assumed that it is fully developed. That it develops, that means it is of adult size. Only this lateral wall is thin at the time of birth. So we will discuss later. So here you can see this roof is formed. This roof, this roof is a continuation of the tegmen temporae. This is tegmen temporae. So that's why this, this roof is known as tegmen anterior. This is tegmen anterior. This is tegmen tympani. This is tegmen anterior. It is the roof of the muscular antenna. That's why tegment antenna. This is continuation of the tegment antenna. This is the roof. And this floor, this floor is formed by we have numerous ear cells, small pockets of the ear cells. This is ear cells. This is not the muscular ear cells. From the floor, so roof and floor. And anterior wall, here you can see upper part, anterior wall communicate with the EPT panel, middle ear, 
and the lower part it is related with this. Here lies this is facial canal and through this canal facial nerve passes. So anterior this is anteriorism. The anterior here will be facial canal and facial nerve. And posteriorly here, here. This is posterior part. Posterior part is related with sigmoid sinus. And uh, medial part, this is medial part. Medial part here it related with the here is lateral semicircular canal. So this medial wall is written with the lateral semicircular canal and also posterior semicircular canal. So it is posterior, it is written with the lateral semicircular canal. Here, this is prominence of the lateral semicircular canal and medial side. And lateral side, this part is lateral. From here we are stuck. If you get a cut here and see this part, this is lateral wall. This is lateral wall. The eye birth, this lateral wall is very thin. It is about 2, milli, two millimeter thick. This 2 millimeter thick at birth. Gradually, by rate of one millimeter, one millimeter each year, its size increases up to it reaches up to fifteen millimeter. That is one point uh, one point five centimeter. So its lateral wall thickness. Initially, at time of birth, it is very thin. This is only two millimeter thick, and gradually its thickness increases by one millimeter per year, up to fifteen year, and it reaches up to level of one point five centimeter, fifteen millimeter. So it becomes thick, and you can see here. So the the are Boundaries of this and lately this part is this initially its thickness is very less at time of birth but at the age of 15 it become 1.5 centimeter thick and this bus track enter it is clinically important because, because when this part is infected and there is a need of opening up the, this part, then some landmarks are there. Here is, as you know, Simba Kanki. This is Simba Kanki. You have the anterior crust. This is the crust of the, crust of the helix. And this is anti helix. This part is Simba Kanki. So, here, this Simba Kanki. Like just opposite to supramiatal triangle or mild even triangle. Here lies supramiatal triangle. And the supramiatal triangle, like just deep to the supramiatal triangle, this is present. This one is present. So through this sup supramiatal triangle, you can easily approach to muscular entrum. And this muscular entrum also communicates with numerous. Muscular air cells, exactly muscular air cells. This muscular enter and air cells are lined by simple squamous non ciliated epithelium. Simple squamous non ciliated epithelium. There is a variation. This is muscular process. Here is, in some cases, this is. Pneumatic type and in some cases, sclerotic type. 
and in some cases it mix, mixed. In pneumatic type, it is mostly filled by pneumatic air cells. In explosive type, pneumatic air cells are not formed, it is totally bone is present here. It mix both parts of it. This is mustard air cells. So this is all about the uh, mustard antrum. Adjust to mustard and mustard air cells. Thank you.